hey, one more day in the world of crypto. A good time to be alive. Looks exciting things happening. You're actually getting three videos from us today if everything comes out right. I'm still traveling, but we need to talk about this executive order that Biden signed yesterday. I guess when you get this tomorrow, because it's nighttime here right now, I just got done. We're up at the property working and trying to get this ready to sell so we can go build, buy our crypto land to buy our renewable crypto mining farm or building, I should say. Look, many people are saying, hey, this is good news. It means crypto's here to stay when you got U.S. presidents, not just U.S. presidents, but you've got Russia, amongst others, in India, they say, okay, we're going to accept crypto, we're going to make these regulations. Great. Everybody's out there applauding, saying people in crypto can celebrate today. And people are so happy because they think they're going to finally regulate it. We see that's where we're being deceived. That is good. But it's also not what Bitcoin and crypto was founded on. We need to talk about that a little bit to see what is the underlying aspect that's always being mentioned in that executive order that should concern you and I in the crypto space. Let's, talk, let's take a look at that. Right, I was going to pull this order out, but there's, there's other people out there talking about the order. I just want to kind of give a, uh, a summary of, of what's going on. You can find that order. Just go in and punch anybody in for Joe Biden signs cryptocurrency uh, executive order. That's everywhere. In fact, I went to get a, a, a I was at a, a store today and I was talking to a lady and um, I just mentioned what I do. And she started saying, oh, you know, I know nothing about this Bitcoin and crypto stuff. You know, tell me a little bit about it. So I saw it in the news and I realized, hey, I thought this stuff was just like, you know, for like video gamers and just something that was kind of like, you know, going to pass. I always like tangible money in my hands. But it seems like if the president of the United States is going to make an executive order around it, then it's for real. It must be something that we should look into. So tell me about it. So in that aspect, and unfortunately for her, Michelle, if you're listening, she sat and listened to two hours of what cryptocurrency is in, in, in basics, and she was really receptive. I turned her on to, like, you know, the Helium Project and how she can get involved and so forth, especially in the area they're at. There's not a lot of hot spots and kind of told her what she can do. It was great. I love sharing it. It's what we do this video for. And I repeat, I don't do this video to make money on YouTube. We monetized a channel recently. If we get something from it, great. If it demonetizes, fantastic. All I want to do is share with what our experience we have here in our team and what we think is important to know. So look, I've seen a lot of YouTubers out there. YouTubers I respect. And I, and I, I tell you what, I'm on the same page as Son of a Tech. I, I'm, I'm right there with him and I really like the way he sees through a lot of this and looks down the road. Yeah, it's great that governments now are saying, saying okay, look, we got to get involved with cryptocurrency thing. We got to regulate it. But one thing is they're afraid of it. And because they're afraid of it, they're going to actually come in and restrict it. They're afraid right now that Russia, Ukraine, and, and, and Venezuela, as well as Iraq, as we mentioned before, are going to be able to bypass these sanctions. In other words, these countries that don't do what some of these other countries tell them they should do or how they should behave. And, I, and I'm not for any country like China, for example, be directly, that abuses human rights and has more than 1 billion people incarcerated just because they don't like their religious beliefs or they want to speak up against the current communist party that's in control of their country, right? Like it or don't like it. I don't like that. I defend freedom. That's why I defend crypto. The banking system does not defend freedom. It controls us. It tells us what we can do, what we cannot do. We've had plenty of, a lot of problems lately, too, because the bank's saying, hey, you've reached your limit. You can't move any more money in your accounts. Well, why not? Well, you have to explain to us where all that comes from. We already explained to you. 
But you got to explain to us again. And you have to go back and every transaction you've done, we want to see where it came from. Well, that's nearly impossible. So what they do, they're closing our, one of our accounts. And that's the point. If the government steps in to regulate, they will control your crypto wallets. And they'll take that if they want to. It's digital. It's encrypted digital. Now remember, it's not a CDBC. It's not a digital currency. In other words, CDBC is a central bank digital currency. All right? And in this executive order, what you hear over and over again is for protection, for national security, for protection of the public, for national security. So what they're doing right now is they realize these sanctions that issued against Russia, Russia's able to actually, people in Russia are able to actually use their cryptocurrencies to actually survive. You know why? Because the banks are closing, they're shutting down and not allowing people to withdraw their money. Not just in Russia, but also you have the same thing going on in Ukraine. I heard a story of a Ukrainian individual who could not pull their money out. So they had to flee the country with a little tiny cold wallet, a little flash. They left with that, they left the country, got to Poland, went to Poland, and were able to pull out, cash out their Bitcoin, and they're surviving off of what they had put away in Bitcoin. The banks froze their assets because there's a run of the banks. And the banks will always do that. Now, if we put that same banking system in control, and others are saying, hey, this is great, because what this executive order did was it assigned all these different bodies of government now to over to look into cryptocurrencies and to pass laws to regulate them, to control them. It'll be the same thing as the banking system. So I guess it's great they're accepting it, but it defeats the whole purpose. It shoots us in the foot. So those out there applauding are just seeing short-sightedness. And really, those YouTubers, please, get out of crypto. Go do something else. Go back to the stock market. Go back to a controlled environment that you love so much. This space is for people who do not want to be controlled. This space is for people who want to make our own set of regulations. Now, you can say, a lot of people are getting scammed. Yeah, they are. And you know why? Because we're not stepping up. Somebody hasn't come forward yet to say, you know what? We need to form a blockchain. We need to form a set of rules between us in this great democracy of the world of how we can actually go about and eliminate these people scamming other people. If you're relying on the governments to do that, then you're allowing the governments to step in and take away our actual privacy and take away our private property, which is our cryptocurrency. And then if we have a disaster or a national emergency, they can shut that down at any given moment, just like they do your bank account. There's a lot of people out there who lose money in bank accounts. I have lost money sending money. The bank accounts, I don't know. I said, well, let me see the transaction. Look, can't see that because that's private. What I like about cryptocurrency is you can see everything. That's why they're talking about money laundering. That's focus, focus. Because you can see it. It's much more transparent than the current banking system is. So what this, what this actually means then is this. In summary, I know I'm going off on this because I'm actually irritated. There's so many people out there. Even YouTubers I respect are out there applauding this. Yay! They're just happy because they thought Joe Biden was going to come out and just ax them. He's going to say, illegal. It's legal. Okay, great. We'll give a little bit more freedom back so we can have a little bit here. Hey, they're going to tax the living petite out of you, just like they're doing in Colombia and in Venezuela with the cryptocurrency taxes. And the other countries now, there's a really high tax. And you know what's funny? When they charge a 30% tax, it's not on your capital gains. It's on the actual transaction value. So if you bought, if you had... $45,000 or Bitcoin to $40,000. Now, obviously, the cryptocurrency market, especially Bitcoin, responded well to this news because people started coming back in again. I don't like these kind of people. They're the same ones when the war started to start pulling money out. And then you saw people shifting the cryptocurrency because bank accounts are getting shut down. If you're going to be in crypto, be in it for the right reasons. You don't come in crypto just to get rich overnight. We did another video that came out like yesterday. Talks about how you build wealth and buy down debt. That comes over time. What's Bitcoin going to go to? 100,000? I don't know. All we know is that it continues to grow and it's outpacing gold and silver. Gold and silver is big and bulky. And the government's taken that before because the government has control over those markets. Now, they don't have control over crypto. And that's why people, 
like this person in Poland, and I've heard of others as well. You know, there's good people in Russia that don't agree with what's going on with Putin. I have good friends in Russia that are very much pro-American. They have property here in America. But they're all gonna they're running the sanctions as well. They're feeling the brunt of this as well because because they're Russian. Then what's gonna happen to their property here in the United States too? Is it gonna be taken from them? If somehow they can link that they're feeling with Putin? See, that's what you have to see here. This is overreaching of the government again to try to reach into our pockets because it allows this market, this free market economy, for so many poor people to actually rise up. What we're doing right now in South America in seeing these, these poor, poor people, these elderly poor people as well, come on board with us and we're actually teaching them how they can actually become self-sufficient financially. And they're doing it. They're already starting to see some returns. You know, we hook them up with, with different networks like Helium and even Planet Watch. You know, it's down. Heck, if they're making 70 bucks or 100 bucks off of an aware right now that we put in their homes for them, they're excited about it. So we, we load their homes up with different devices. You guys can do the same thing for people. That's what we do here. So once we start regulating that, what's going to happen is the government's going to come in and take that now from them. That's why they're still poor. Come on. I, I, now, I'm not trying to defend anybody, but I've lived in these socialist, fascist countries. Remember, fascism on the left. It's not on the right. That's a lie. It's on the left because it's more control. Anything you have more, more of a closer to tyranny, more control, less the people decide, that moves to the left. And fascism moves to a control mechanism controlling government. I've watched it. I've watched these poor people not get any wealthier. Okay, they educate them a little more. But they educate them just enough to make them better slaves to the system. Not that they teach them how to become entrepreneurs or self-sufficient. That's what we do down there. And I know our time is probably limited down there. I'm sure we're going to be asked to leave. But we're already doing that. Like bringing our stuff to a state that's pro-crypto and putting ourselves in offshore trust, legal offshore trust. By the way, I don't care if Barack Obama says, you can legally do this. You can legally reduce your taxes by being in a tax haven jurisdiction. That's legal. And those banks are set up and historically maintained faithful to their clients, not to the government pressure or the global pressures from the banking system or IMF or the World Bank, etc. They operate themselves. Nevis is ideal. And it's great for asset protection. That's smart. This is what all the government officials are doing and what wealthy people do. When I was a CEO, I was wealthy. What's wealthier than now? That's what we did. It wasn't to hide anything. It was to protect things. When the company, we had to liquidate the company in 2008, we brought back everything. We liquidated it out and gave back to everybody what they had. Living in the properties. We divided it all, divided it all up. So, point being that This executive order is good in the fact that, hey, the global environment's realizing this isn't going anywhere. And if they don't embrace it, they're not getting that taxation. And what's going to happen now is because they're given all this oversight, divided amongst all the different branches of this government they have in the states, large government. Thomas Jefferson was very, very, very critical on large government. That's why him and Adams banged heads a lot. He wants smaller government. I want a larger government. Jefferson always said it's very dangerous without larger government. He said, take away the freedom of the people. And that's what it's doing. So during our pandemic times, if we have an issue again, you know, if we have problems in the future, and they shut us down again, they'll be able to control what we can actually pull out, what we can live off of. Instead of us feeling, hey, I got my money put away, I can liquidate on a decentralized platform. And that's what they're going to attack. They're going to go after decentralized platforms. Coinbase and the the others that are already becoming centralized, they're already in bed now with the government because all they think about is the bottom line. But they'll give you up in a heartbeat. In fact, there's a lot of voluntary sanctions going on on crypto platforms right now just to look like a good guy. And those are all basically based off of Ethereum. So just keep that in mind. Ethereum is not Bitcoin. They run two different philosophies. Gladly is a different person than Shitoshi Nakamoto. They have different ideologies. One cares about himself and growing wealthy. The other one just wanted to maintain unidentified. Didn't want the credit for it. Created something that the world can benefit from, and we have benefited from it. And people right now are surviving because they have access to their crypto wallets. 
See, what they want to do too is make those cold wallets illegal. So when you travel, there's going to be a ban. You're going to have so much money. So in that cold wallet, obviously you're going to have to open that up and show them. So you're going to have to give them your keys at the airports. Or they're going to take that from you as contraband. So keep that in mind. They have the mission travel restrictions already. That's from the FATF, the FATF. that already issued about how much money should be able to move from country to country over borders. They want to control that. And they say for sanction purposes, for national security. Look, what's repeating this executive order is the United States of America needs to be in control. Control, control, control for protection, protection, protection. See, you get my drift? I don't want them to protect me. I am responsible for me. You should be responsible for you. And we should be responsible for cleaning up what we got to clean up in the crypto in the crypto space. Those people are out there trying to take advantage of people. We need to clean that up. What we need the government to do is recognize this as a currency or as an asset so we can claim it as property and then we can get into the court systems. And that's one reason why there's a lot of fraud going on in the crypto space. It's a new frontier. It's wild, wild west. And that's going to happen. But in that new frontier are great opportunities. What we need to do is come together and we don't need the government involved with us. I'm sorry. I'm not celebrating. All right. So he didn't cut the legs of cryptocurrency. I almost wish he would have. You know, we got to remember something. Cryptocurrency was always in the black market, if you will. It was never mainstream. So what was Biden going to do? Cut it from the black market? The black market exists outside of government control. So what he wants to do is pull it from the black market, what Putin did, what other countries can do. And I think China's going to go back and do the same thing. India did the same thing. They started pushing away. They thought, no, 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 let's bring it in. We can charge a lot of tax on this. And we can make a lot of money on this too. What they're saying is, well, if the government issues sanctions, then they can use cryptocurrencies to then avoid the sanctions. Well, maybe in the future. But right now, there's only about, at best, there was $3 trillion of movement daily, right? So you don't have the money that can sustain an economy or a war like for Russia right now. It doesn't exist. Maybe down the road it might. So, okay, when we're addressing issues down the road. For money laundering, we won't go there anymore. Money laundering is very difficult to do in crypto because it's so transparent. It's much easier to do the banking system. And remember, I was there as CEO 2008. I got offered millions of dollars from private lenders through the presence of banks. That money was not clean. I didn't take it. When I found out what it was, I didn't take it. But the banks were, were going to bring it in for me, charging 2%. The police were also were going to bring it in cash, charging 2%. The same organizations that are existing during the, the government to actually help protect us against money laundering and terrorism are the ones that are actually funneling it. I'm sorry if you don't agree with me, but I've been there, and I have seen it with my own eyes on more than one occasion, and I have watched other people my competitors, and I've spoken to them, that I actually took it and went into it and did it. And I know how they got the money. So I've lived down in Latin America for 21 years now. 21 years. So I know how it works. And to think America is any different, you're being deceived. It's not any different anymore. We haven't been for a long time. And we need to step up now and clean that up. And we start with local government. It's our local government. What we need is somebody like Wyoming and Texas the laws that legalize it, and they give this this legalization and this small parameters, and they say, okay, now the rest of the risk is on you. But they legalize them so we can go through the judicial system. That's all we need from the government. What Biden wants to do is control it. So let's not celebrate. Actually, I would rather even try to cut the legs and it stay in the black market, and we continue operating as we were because it remains between us. It remains a true Democratic Republic. Now you're going to centralize it. And people are plotting that. People are plotting that. I suggest you educate yourself more. And if you want centralized cryptocurrencies, don't worry because they also introduced a CDBC for the United States of America to investigate the benefits of their own digital currency. And keep in mind, digital currencies are not encrypted currencies. They're two different animals. They operate differently. One's decentralized. One is centralized. I am pro-decentralized. 
I want us, what the Founding Fathers developed America for, what the world is, is biting into and that whole freedom after the American Constitution Revolution is that whole idea that we, the people, govern ourselves. And the moment government steps in with this executive order from Joe Biden, it's not we, the people anymore. We, the slaves. And I'm sorry, I don't have the heart of a slave. I have the heart of a free man. And I hope you do too. DeFi, IO team, hit that subscribe button. Let's learn this together. We'll see you tomorrow. We hope you enjoyed this segment of our video with DeFi IoT. Remember, we're not professional advisors. We do this as a business, as a hobby, and we study, we experiment, and we want to share it with you. If you can get some benefit from this, great. What we do is we go out, we purchase with our own money, and we experiment to see what true results are. We want you to be able to share in our experiences so you don't have to lose like we have. If you can win where we've won, fantastic. Remember to do your own research and your own homework. It's very important before you make any decisions. We will see you in our next video.